If you're a fan of external GPUs, then you know that you really have to use an external display to take advantage of that eGPU, but that all changes thanks to a new script called Set eGPU. Set eGPU is a script that helps you render applications on an external GPU and present them on your internal display. That's right, no external display required to drive applications with your external graphics box. That is all thanks to this script right here, Set eGPU, from one of the members of the prolific eGPU.io community. Definitely recommend you check those guys out. I'll have it linked down below in the description. So the first thing you wanna do is open up a terminal window. You can find that in Applications in the Finder and then go to Utilities, open up Terminal, and then you install Set eGPU. Now it's super simple. All you do is copy this concatenated command and then paste it in your terminal. Now this will install set eGPU. It's an open source script so you can check it out and see what it's doing. So once you paste it in, it's gonna ask you for your password, just put your password in, and then it will build and deploy the binary so that you can just easily run set eGPU at any time directly from the terminal. So once you have it installed, it should look like this, and then we can move on to the next step. So once you install it, you can easily configure set eGPU. Uh, there are six different options here. The first option is to set eGPU preference for all applications. So basically, you're accelerating all applications in the applications folder when you select option one. So this will go through and override plist values non-destructively. And those values are assigned to GPU selection policy and Apple provided parameters. So you don't have to worry about this thing doing anything weird. These are all parameters built into Mac OS 10.13.4. Uh, it's just exposing them so that end users can use them. So if you use option number four, this will reset GPU preferences for all applications. So basically setting it back to default if you used option one. Now option two is interesting because this allows you to target specific applications instead of all of the applications in the applications folder. Now what it instructs you to do is to go into Launchpad and find the name of the application you wish to target and type that name exactly as it's seen in Launchpad. So in this case, Final Cut Pro, no X at the end. Press return and we're good to go. So now Final Cut Pro 10 will benefit from GPU rendering while displayed on the internal display. So we're gonna check option three and this allows you to check eGPU preference parameters for individual applications. So just type Final Cut Pro in there and you can see where it says prefers external GPUs. So that means it will be accelerated by the external GPU. Now, if I select option five, I can reset GPU preferences for specific applications. So basically you just type in Final Cut Pro again, and now we can verify by using option three again, type in Final Cut Pro, press return, and you will see where it says no preference set. So basically we reset that parameter so it's no longer be, being driven by that external GPU. Uh, so very simple, straightforward to the point script here, super easy to use. I mean, it doesn't get any easier than this. There are some advanced parameters, parameters <laughs> that you can use. You can check those details down below in the description. So now I'm using option two to add GPU acceleration back to Final Cut Pro 10. Because you know what we're gonna do now? We're going to run some benchmarks to see if Final Cut Pro 10 actually uses that external GPU and see if there's any real tangible benefits to using an external GPU with Final Cut Pro 10 driven by that external GPU displayed or drawn on that internal display. So we're gonna exit out of set eGPU. Of course, you can go back into that anytime you want just by typing set dash eGPU at a terminal window. All right, so now let's talk about GPU monitoring because this is very important so you know exactly what's going on. If you go into Applications, Utilities, Open Up Activity Monitor, you will find an option under the Window menu in the menu bar here. So go to Window and select GPU History and that will open up a way for you to monitor your GPU activity. Now, what I do recommend that you do is go into the View menu and select Update Frequency and change that to Very Often so you get uh, quicker updates on the GPU history monitor. And that of course will come in handy when we start running benchmarks, which I'm about to do right now. 
No test would be complete with Final Cut Pro 10 without running the Bruce X test. This is, of course, that 5K benchmark that really stresses your GPU. And this is a great test for external GPUs where really paint a picture as to whether or not there's any real tangible benefits to driving Final Cut Pro 10 without that external display. Uh, so let's go ahead and load up the Bruce X benchmark here. We're going to open up our good friend, Mr. Stopwatch, so we can keep tabs on the timing. And I think we're almost good to go. So let's go ahead and export a file. I've turned background rendering off and we're going to change it to ProRes 422. I think we're good. Let's go ahead and click next and save that and start Mr. Stopwatch. I'm going to speed it up a little bit so we don't have to wait, but it, it's not going to take long. This is being driven or being rendered by that external GPU being displayed on my MacBook Pro's internal display. You can see just a hair below 19 seconds. Now I'm going to remove the external GPU. We're going to run this again and you're going to see a big difference here with the Bruce X benchmark. So let's go ahead and fire it on up here and I'm going to speed it up again and notice we're already past that 18 seconds and we're just continuing to go there folks and it's still going all right we're slowing down now and there we go folks a minute 22 seconds so over a minute more without that external GPU rendering Final Cut Pro 10 this is a benchmark I did earlier but basically it's you know, same ballpark, 21 seconds, really, really short time with that eGPU, that Vega 64, as opposed to 75 seconds. So you can see real tangible benefits, even with a little bit of overhead. Of course, the internal GPU is the only thing that can drive that internal display. So you actually have to copy the draw data over from the external GPU over to the, to the internal GPU. So that adds a little bit of overhead, but you can see that 4K export there, export times cut in half using that external GPU on the internal display. Now, when running OpenGL benchmarks, I did need to use this little dongle here. Basically, it's a dummy adapter. Uh, you don't need to use a full-fledged external display, but OpenGL apps did not want to display properly on the internal display without that little dummy adapter connected. But you can see here, this is Heaven Benchmark, the Unigen Heaven running on the internal display being driven by the eGPU. And you can see, yeah, big difference there between the iGPU, the internal graphics, Intel Iris Plus graphics 640, and the Radeon RX Vega 64. Obviously not as good as if you were connected directly to an external display because of what I just explained earlier, but you can see the frames per second are still really good. And although I haven't tested any games out, just not a big PC gamer, you can tell from these synthetic benchmarks that when it comes to frame rate, the games would probably do well. So ladies and gentlemen, that has been a look at set eGPU. This is just a preliminary test. I plan on doing much more with eGPUs like this one from Sonnet. So what do you guys think? Are you excited about this? Leave me a thumbs up if so. And for much more detail, be sure to read the full post linked down below in the description. And if you're excited about eGPUs, leave me a thumbs up. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.